Continuing our journey across the world exploring strange, terrifying and crazy folklore, we have been to Sweden and more recently North America. Now for today's episode, we won't have to travel far, as by very popular demand we will be taking a look at some Native American folklore. If the few Native American legends I've covered so far on the channel are anything to go by, then this should be a very fun episode. Before we go any further, today's video has been sponsored by Babbel, the only language learning platform and application you'll need. For me, learning the basics of different languages definitely helps when pronouncing legends and stories from other countries. I started using Babbel on my computer, but then switched over to the app on my phone as it meant I could use it on the go. With Babbel you can learn languages in all manner of ways and it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an expert. There are live lessons taught by teachers, pre-planned lessons, games, videos and even podcasts. I personally like the 10 minute lessons as I can fit multiple in throughout the day and realistically it's probably time I would have spent browsing on my phone anyway. Babbel also teaches you more than just vocabulary. You learn all sorts of history, culture, and traditions. I chose Spanish as the latest language I would try not to butcher. Hola. Hola. Gracias. Gracias. Adiós. Adiós. Sí. Sí. Yo soy Lucía Martínez. Yo soy Lucía Martínez. ¿Usted es la señora García? ¿Usted es la señora García? Sí, I'm basically Spanish now. All jokes aside, if you'd like to start learning a new language, then use my link in the description for 65% off your subscription. In the forests of eastern Canada and the Great Lakes region, the Algonquin people tell stories of a mythical creature, a terrifying spirit evil in nature. Its hunger cannot be satiated, and so it searches for victims to possess. Those who fall under its influence have an uncontrollable desire to murder and cannibalize other human beings. The creature in question is indeed the Wendigo, an enormous monster forged from ice that grows bigger and bigger in line with its appetite. You'll know when one approaches, as even the slightest breeze becomes a petrifying chill. The air is filled with a stench that can only be compared to death itself, because that is what follows wherever the Wendigo goes. The Wendigo represents greed, famine, starvation, the cold, and corruption. Its appearance at its core is still somewhat human, just amplified in the worst ways. A dark, twisted, and terrifying representation of humanity, its vices, and hardships. The Wendigo is a creature we've already covered, so I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who wants a more detailed explanation. Another creature we've discussed is the Skinwalker, an individual often seen as a witch of sorts, who can disguise and transform themselves into an animal. Animals associated with skinwalkers include coyotes, wolves, bears, dogs, and numerous others. There are several different types of skinwalkers discussed in Navajo culture, but they are always seen in a negative light. Those in the community who are helpful in both a spiritual and physical way will often be referred to as medicine men and women. These men and women embody everything positive about Navajo culture and values. Part of becoming a healer involves learning various practices, including a balance of magic that can be seen as good and also evil. The Skinwalkers can be seen as the polar opposite. They may once have been medicine men and women, but in this process they were tempted by the evil and nefarious arts. The responsibility of this power is too much for some, and the allure of the twisted and dark ceremonies is too strong. They are corrupted and become witches instead. 
where a medicine man or woman would use their gifts and ancestral guidance for good, skinwalkers may hide amongst their tribe in plain sight during the day, only to transform and perform these evil acts under the cover of night. Stories and legends relating to skinwalkers are very important, and so they are not really discussed with those considered outsiders. The process of becoming a skinwalker, therefore, is virtually unknown. Some theories suggest in exchange for such power, one would have to perform a truly monstrous ceremony, an irredeemable act, taking the life of someone close to you, perhaps a family member. Given the dark tone and severity of these legends, it's understandable why they are not spoken of in much detail, Horned serpents and dragons appear in most cultures, and Native American cultures are no exception. There are numerous names for these creatures across the many tribes. The Cherokee refer to this serpent as the Uktana, a large underwater serpent with shimmering scales that burn bright, horns, and a crystal located in its forehead. The scales and crystals were thought to have magical properties, and were used for divination. The horns also had medicinal properties, which would make hunting these serpents terrifying, as it may seem a worthwhile endeavour. It's said that a horn serpent that resembles a stag will not harm humans, but its crystal seems to have a magnetic power over other animals. The Cherokee saw this glistening crystal as the greatest prize, however, it was also the greatest danger. Those who encounter the serpent are drawn in by how bright the crystal burns. Rather than flee, they are drawn towards it, and in turn their death. To make the hunt even more challenging, the majority of its scales are impenetrable, the only way to kill the Uktana is by following the rings and spots that run all along its body. The seventh spot from its head is where its heart is located, and this is the only area vulnerable to any kind of attack. There are some stories of these serpents being driven away and destroyed by the Thunderbirds, which segues us nicely into our next creature. Similar to the Horned Serpent, the Thunderbird was thought to occupy the Great Plains and the Great Lakes region. A large bird that could generate thunder by simply flapping its wings, hence the name. Often portrayed as a giant eagle, they sometimes also have control over the rain and other elements of the weather. The conflict between the Horn Serpent and the Thunderbird relates back to an Algonquin story. The Thunderbird reigned over the Upper World, and the Horn Serpent reigned over the Underworld. When these creatures from the Underworld would attempt to invade the Upper World, the Thunderbird watching from above would flap its wings and shoot thunder down at the invading creatures. There are several stories that state the Thunderbirds were created to fight the Underworld spirits, but also to punish humans who broke the morals and codes that govern their society. Although the Thunderbirds were seen as protectors, and you often do see them depicted on totem poles, they still served as a reminder of the morals that were valued. The Dear Woman or Dear Lady is certainly an archetype we see often in folklore, a succubus, siren, or seductive type of monster. Depending on the situation, she can appear in two different lights. For men who remain faithful and take care of their families, she is a spirit associated with love and fertility. However, those who harm women and children encounter a very different creature, a vengeful monster who lures and seduces these men to then murder them for their misdeeds and sins. Some believe that seeing the dear woman at first is more of a warning, a reminder that some kind of personal change must occur. If this warning is ignored, the next time you see her will be the last. 
For those wondering how the dear woman punishes these men, she hides behind a bush or tree and calls out to them, only revealing her human side. As these men are unfaithful, the call of a beautiful woman is more than enough to grab their attention. By the time they are close enough to realise she isn't entirely human, it's already too late. Her hooves are used to trample and stamp her victim to death. I'm sure there's a message there about not taking advantage and treading all over the people who care about you, but being punished by a dear woman who literally treads all over you seems like the perfect amount of irony. In Cherokee folklore existed a figure known as Spearfinger, a woman with stone-like skin and an elongated razor-sharp finger on her right hand that she would use to slice open her victims. She would walk the trails and rivers surrounding the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina. It's said that you can hear Spearfinger humming her favourite song, echoing throughout the mountains and scaring away any nearby wildlife. Although nobody was safe, she preferred to target children, transforming herself into family members to deceive them. She could also take the form of a helpless elderly woman. Those kind enough to offer her assistance are left regretting their decision. Defeating Spearfinger was near impossible, as her skin was made of stone. Arrows and any other kind of sharp weapon would merely bounce off her. Her only known weakness was that her heart was located in her right palm, and so she clutches it tight, using her elongated finger as protection. Eventually, the Cherokee tribes came together and devised a plan to finally kill Spearfinger. Under advice from a medicine man, they dug a large pit, and with green sapling created a bushfire large enough to attract her attention. She came to the village disguised as an elderly woman, asking for assistance. The hunters soon realised this was a disguise and began to attack. The spears thrown bounced and ricocheted. This only angered Spearfinger as she ran towards them. However, this was expected, and in chasing them she had fallen into the pit. Even with her trapped, the Cherokee had no idea how to kill her. They noticed the birds who were once terrified of Spearfinger flew down to offer assistance. One bird began to sing. The sound it was making translated to mean heart. The hunters took this to mean shoot her in her chest, and so they took the bird's advice. The arrows and spears once again could not penetrate Spearfinger's skin, and so they turned to the bird and cut out its tongue, enraged it would lie to them. However, the bird did not lie. The hunters were unaware that her heart was not located in her chest. Another bird flew down, but this time landed on Spearfinger's right hand. The hunters listened again, and began to attack the hand that was always closed so tightly. Only now Spearfinger began to panic. Eventually, one of the spears severed her heart and she fell to the ground. The stone giant that plagued the lands was gone, but the legend and stories of Spearfinger continued. And that brings today's episode to an end. Let me know which of today's stories were your favourite in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.